Eyewear is an important part of 18th and 19th century uh, reenacting. And uh, finding the, just the right kind of eyewear can be a little tricky. At James Townsend and Son, we carry uh, many different kinds of period eyewear. And today I'm going to go over these so that you can choose the best one for your outfit. So let's start off with eyewear that you need, even if you don't need eyewear. And that is the new little quizzers we sell at James Townsend and Son. These uh, quizzers are made of sterling silver, handmade of sterling silver, right here uh, in Indiana. Every gentleman or lady would have a quizzer about their neck to use for close-up reading or, uh, or other uh, close-up uh, work that they needed to do. These quizzers come with a uh, silk lanyard and about a 3x power lens in them, so they're really good for close-up reading. So the next piece of eyewear basically in, in the timeline are these little Nuremberg's. These are new to the catalog this year and uh, Nuremberg's were actually uh, made in Nuremberg, Germany. They started making these about the middle of the 17th century and these little guys are readers. They're good from the middle of the 17th century and they made them nearly unchanged for almost 200 years so they really stretch for a long period of time. These frames are made to just uh, clip onto the end of your nose and they're very good for reading. Uh, these have a 2x power lens in them and they're not meant for day-to-day -day wear um, looking out beyond. They're really just for reading. These are also made of sterling silver. They have a silk thread binding just like the originals would have had to help them stay on your nose. The box they come in is a uh, handmade wooden slide top box made specifically for them. Around 1740, uh, eyewear started to have uh, temple pieces attached. And before that 1740 time period, possibly as early as 1725, it's, it's hard to nail down exactly, but all, all glasses before that were just the front piece, sort of like the, uh, the Nuremberg glasses. And either you had to clip them on your nose or actually hold the frames up to your, to your eyes. And so m almost all glasses up to that point were specifically made for reading. You couldn't very well go about you know, holding your glasses in front of your face. We call these our temple framed uh, glasses. And most of the temples during that time period were actually shorter than this. We've actually stretched these temple pieces out so that uh, when you put your, your glasses on, they stretch out to just beyond your ear so that you can wear them naturally around um, all throughout the day. Before that, they were shorter and they were made to just stick really to the side of your head. And they, they made them shorter like that so that they wouldn't mess up your wig as you took your glasses and on and off. But most people don't want to wear their glasses like that today, so we stretch these temple pieces out. The larger loops on the end of the temple pieces are good for tying uh, a ribbon on so they will stay on your head. This is also the typical design for the end of the temple piece all the way up until the late 18th century when this starts to change. These glasses are constructed exactly like an original pair. Uh, with the with the uh, design of the uh, of the hinge area here, we've actually stretched these out a little bit for the modern face. Most people have a wider uh, face than they did in the 18th century, so we stretch these out just a little bit. These glasses are made from a uh, white brass or Manel metal, uh, but we've had these coated with a, a black sort of paint, which emulates the. Uh, the coating or the uh, kind of uh, paint that they would have used in the 18th century. The frames come with a plain uh, clear lens in them. They don't have any readers uh, in them, but they are made so that uh, these can be screwed apart and your prescription can be put into these. If you ask when you order these, we can put reader lenses into these 2X readers. Uh, that would be a, a little bit extra fee on that. Now, exactly like those same frames, we also offer uh, a pair of sterling silver frames in that same design. These have that uh, same temple design. These are sterling silver. They're made right here in the United States. These do come with a pair of 2X readers installed in them. And these glasses also come with a lined tin case to give them extra protection. Both of these temple style frames are good from 1740 all the way up until about 1800, possibly even 1820. Around 1755 or 1756, 
uh, a, uh, an eyeglasses maker in Great Britain invented the double uh, hinged frames. And that's what we've got here. These are our uh, standard 18th century frames. They have a teardrop end. They have an extra uh, set of hinges here in the middle. There is a little bit of difference here in that the, uh, the front section is made using a bit more modern techniques. But from all appearances, they look essentially the same. These are slightly narrower than the uh, 1740s temple frame glasses. They also come with a, uh, a plain uh, lens in here without any magnification. Uh, if you do ask, we will be able to put uh, 2x reader lenses in these for an extra fee. And the final type of eyewear that we carry in our catalog are our 19th century frames. And these are actually late 19th century, although many reenactors use these because they look better than modern frames and they also wear better than most of the period uh, earlier frames. So these have the... Uh, have a cable temple on the back, which is actually pretty late. This is probably 1880s or a little bit later, this style. The front, though, is not bad. Uh, good for uh, middle 19th century and later on. So a lot of Civil War reenactors and even 18th century reenactors use these because they're so much more comfortable. These, like all the other ones, have screws, so they're very easy to put a prescription uh, frame or a prescription lens into them. These frames are in fact so comfortable that I know many people that wear them for the day, their day-to-day -day eyewear. Many people will find these frames uh, are a little too narrow for their, their faces. Even though we've uh, stretched many of these out, they're still too narrow for a lot of modern faces. So one of the things you can do is to crank your uh, temple pieces out and that's very simple to do and I'll give you a real quick demonstration of how to do it. One of the things that's difficult with cranking these out is getting them very consistent and I usually uh, just do them with my hands not with any extra tools and uh, you just want to try to uh, get your bends in exactly the same location on both sides but I usually take about a thumb's width um, back from the hinge point on one side and I'm going to bend that out at about a 45 degree angle so I'll just do that real quick and then just come back again a, num a thumbs width or a fingers width back again and just bend that back so that that is now parallel to that first to that first angle so that gives you a much wider fit here and we'll do it on the other side The metal bends very, uh, very easily, and you can see I've just got these a little bit, this just needs a little bit different uh, angle so that they line up. And now it fits a much wider face, and they're much more comfortable when they've been stretched out. All these frames are available either in our print catalog or on our website. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to our channel, I want to welcome you. Uh, you can subscribe by clicking the button right up here. Uh, also check out our related videos. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.